Hello and welcome to Super Story Science number three. Science is served. Food science. Uh, thank you for joining us for part, this part of our summer reading program, Imagine Your Story. I'm Sarah Scoggin and I'm the Early Childhood Librarian at Newberry Free Library. If you're just joining us, I'll put a link up in the card to the past Super Story Science videos. Um, and if you would like to get a digital badge for doing any of the activities in this video, I'll put a link to our digital reading platform down in the description. Um, in our first Super Story Science video, we created a character, a scientist character named Dr. Learnalab, who answers emails that people send him. Uh, so let's see what science email Dr. Learnalab gets. Hello. I was just having a snack before I checked my email. Friday, July 17, 2020, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Dear Dr. Learnalot, I am having a dinner to celebrate the anniversary of my first science fair project. What should I serve for a scientific meal? Sincerely, Cal O'Ree. Well, Cal, really, all food is food that has to do with science. You see, everything that we can see around us, and some things that we can't see, like air, are made of tiny, tiny particles, way, way, way too small to see, called atoms. Let's pretend this pom-pom is an atom. Most atoms don't just like to be by themselves. A lot of them like to stick together in groups, called molecules. Food is made out of molecules that help us to live and grow. It's pretty amazing to think. For example, this leaf of spinach is a plant, and the plant got its energy and its molecules from the dirt it grew in, from the rain, from the air, and energy from the sun. Those are good molecules. Some plants make fruit. It's amazing to think that the energy from the sun was turned into a, what we call sugar energy, molecules of fruit sugar, um, that's part of the apple, that's what makes it sweet. And lots of other kind of molecules and water in it too. Our bodies take the energy and the molecules that they need to build our bodies and to give us energy. So really, we're all powered by the sun. If another animal eats plants or other food and then we eat the animal, like a chicken, the energy gets passed on to us. When we get the food energy, our organs can turn it into energy and new cells. But back to your dinner party. This is the menu that I would choose. For an appetizer, I would start with dairy proteins on Tritichum mastivium wafers, otherwise known as curd cheese on wheat crackers. For something to drink, fizzy orange soda. Kid Science from the website Pink Stripey Socks. For the main meal, you could have Cell Diagram Pizza from Journey to Excellence. If you'd rather have a steak, you could study the Maillard reaction. That's what turns a red raw steak into a brown steak when it's cooked, and it makes it have that cooked steak flavor. And my favorite, dessert. I would serve three states of matter snow cones. So what are the three states of matter? The three states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. Solids tend to just hold the shape they have. Liquids tend to flow into the shape of their container. And gases just kind of spread out. So let me tell you how I made the snow cones. Step one. Boil 473.176473 milliliters of H2O, otherwise known as two cups of water. We want to take it from the liquid state into the gas state, turn it into steam when we boil it in the kettle. If you don't have a kettle, you could boil it in a pot on the stove, so get a grown-up to help you boil the water. Remember when we were talking about molecules before? Uh, this model that I made is of a water molecule, so let's see, we have two hydrogen 
atoms and one oxygen atom stuck together into a water molecule. So like this periodic table of elements behind me has oxygen and hydrogen on it. Just the elements are on there. Not what it's like when it's put together into a molecule. So that's why we sometimes call water H2O. So two of these H's for hydrogen and one of these O's for oxygen. Okay, I've got a couple little models of water molecules here. When the water was just room temperature, it's just out of your faucet, the molecules in the water were moving around at a medium speed. The molecules always move around. They have, they have energy, so they move around. But they're moving medium speed. When we put them in the kettle and heated them up until the water was boiling, the molecules started moving faster and faster and faster until they were moving so fast, some of them flew out of the water out into the air. That was the steam. They were moving really, really fast because they had so much energy. That's what making something hot means, is that you've made all the molecules in it move really fast. Step two, add flavor. So I put my hot water into a pan and I added some ginger spice tea bags that I had in my cupboard. You could use another kind of tea, you could use hot cocoa powder, you could use uh, milk and sugar. I'm using there some honey to make it sweet since it is dessert. Uh, you could experiment. What tastes the best? What works the best? Does it take longer if you add milk? You can try out your different flavors to be creative. This leads me to so many scientific questions. I put ginger in there in my tea. Can I grow ginger in my garden? Why does the spice in it taste spicy? How did bees make the honey that I put into my tea? Oh, I think I'm getting carried away asking too many questions. Can you ask too many questions? Step three, put your bread pan or other container into the freezer. You could use a cookie sheet with really steep sides or something else to freeze it in, just something that won't spill too much when you put it in the freezer. Let it freeze for 1,200 seconds, otherwise known as 20 minutes, and then stir it with a fork. At first, it's going to look like nothing's happening, but if you keep checking back every 20 minutes and stir, you'll see that ice crystals are starting to form. The liquid is going into another state of matter, ice, a solid. If you just put it in the freezer and didn't stir it at all, it would turn into one big solid ice cube, and that wouldn't be very easy to eat. If you forget and it freezes too much, just put it in the refrigerator and keep checking it back until it's melted enough that you can stir it into a snow cone. When we froze the water, the molecules that were in the liquid started moving slower and slower and slower until they were moving very slow. They didn't stop all the way, but they're moving really, really, really slow when it's in ice. Water is always H2O, whether it's steam moving around really fast or liquid water moving medium speed, or ice, a solid, that when they're moving really slow. And there you have it, three states of matter snow cones. Here's the delicious sign. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Lernalot. Um, your mission is to do any of the activities, so to make anything that you saw in the video, the appetizer, the drink, the pizza, the dessert, um, or if you don't have the ingredients to make any of those things, um, when you log into Read Squared for this mission, tell me about the science of anything that you made, any food. So um, you could tell me why your salad dressing separated, or why your popcorn popped, or why your hot chocolate powder didn't dissolve in cold water. Um, so just explain the science of any meal that you ate, um, and you can count that for the mission. Um, thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you again next time.